Welcome to this new iceberg. The JTOH fan game iceberg. This is the most extensive Duke's Towers of Hell fan games iceberg. It covers 8 layers. I will be covering layers 1, 6, 7 and 8 with the help of others, while other great content creators like Ninja and Ocean, Neodymus, Ra Live, and other guests will be covering the iceberg as well. A link or parts in the description of this video. Ninja and Ocean is going to be covering layer 2. Neodymus will be covering layer 3. Gralive will be covering the second half of layer 6. Go to their channels to see each layer as they have done an amazing job. They are great people too. I also want to thank Ninja and Ocean, Neodymus, Gralive and any other guests that appear on this iceberg for dedicating their time to participate in this iceberg. Each layer is kind of ranked by popularity. The layer we are covering today covers fan games which have 500,000 visits or more. This iceberg is gigantic and doesn't even cover all fan games, which is crazy. I've done my best to create this iceberg as extensive as possible, so sorry if a fan game you know is not on here. The iceberg is also in the description, so you can go check it out if you want. For anyone new to J2H, let me give you a quick rundown about what it is. Duke's Towers of Hell is a Roblox Obby game. Obby is short for obstacle. In JTOH, you scale towers that are 1000 studs high to get to a block called the Wind Pad. But it is not that easy, as the difficulty of obstacles increases as you go higher on the difficulty chart. Right now the hardest obstacle beaten in Duke's Towers of Hell is Citadel of Infinite Void, which is a modest 4124 times harder than the first thing you encounter. Every game is linked in the description, so if you haven't played Duke's Towers of Hell, you really should as it's a very unique experience. Welcome to Layer 1. This layer includes fan games that you are most likely familiar with. This layer still has some pretty mysterious fan games. Starting off with the first entry, which is one you most certainly know about. Back in the infancy of the Tower of each genre, two games mainly started, Kitty's Tower of Hell and Tower of Hell. There used to be a debate about which one was first, but it turned out that the underdog in this was the original, making Tower of Hell a fan game of G Tier H. Despite this, Tower of Hell has grown to be much larger than G Tier H. The gameplay of Tower of Hell consists of scaling a randomly generated cylindrical tower that's six floors high. The randomly generated sections are selected from one of 369, but there are a total of 463 sections in the game's history. A few key differences between JTOH and Tower of Hell is that Tower of Hell uses primarily instant kill bricks, while JTOH uses primarily normal kill bricks. Another key difference is the floor count and size. JTOH has larger floors and more floors. There are a lot more differences, but I won't get into them. The Tower of Hell was a game compiled of all random stages in Tower of Hell. This means that it would be 463 floors tall now. Absolutely massive. It was a huge accomplishment to beat this when it was released, as while being half the size of what it would be currently, one mistake near the end will cause a full restart. However, on the 9th of June 2022, it was changed to contain all of Oberon Tune's sessions that were on the release of Tower of Hell. This means that the original The Tower of Hell is not officially available to play. When looking up The Tower of Hell, a game that claims to be the original The Tower of Hell may pop up. Just know that this is not official. Also, the copied versions of The Tower of Hell are made by a group under the same name as the creators of Tower of Hell. While they are available to play, they are much more of a cash grab and have stuff like nukes and other ridiculous stuff. Now on to Tower of Hell fan games. This is the third mini entry. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it's just games that have been created off Tower of Hell's ideas. These can range from games like Tower of Misery, Tower of Dreams, Tower of Hell, Tower of Jump, Tower of Stream, Parkour Tower, and much, much more. You can easily find these fan games by just searching up Tower of Hell in Roblox. Something which is pretty interesting is that some Tower of Hell fan games seem to relate to JTOH Towers. They are nowhere near as high quality as other fan games on this list though. 
The highest quality Tower of Hell fan game that I found was called Parkour Tower, and puts its own spin on the Tower of Hell idea. Unlike other Tower of Hell fan games which are low quality, this one has effort put into it. At the end of the tower there's a hangout place which I found was very cool, which is unique to this game. Last thing for this entry is to keep in mind that a lot of Tower of Hell fan games are not great. This is one of the most popular JTRH fan games. It has 2.2 million visits and is created by another chameleon. Another's Towers of Stupidity has a lot of content, including 12 full areas of content currently available to play. This is a tower game, much like JTRH. It has 10 floored towers, steeples, and citadels. Another's Towers has two worlds, rings and realms. Rings is the default area. There are eight completed rings in the game. Realms are the extra area. There are three completed realms, but five are incomplete. This is one of the oldest and most iconic fan games, from the iconic Citadel of Difficult Collaborations to Tower of Heavy Madness, which has a revamped version in the main game. One of the most iconic features of Another's Towers is the lobbies, which are incredibly detailed and laggy. As the wise restart said in Ring 8, they are just making their lobby laggier. Holy moly, the lobby looks beyond a tower game in details. Ring 8 lobby is shown on the screen. Another funny thing about Another's Towers is that towers submitted to Another's Towers often get into J tier H. Examples of this is Citadel of Lethargy, Tower of Demotic Inspiration, Tower of Uncanny Agony, and many, many more. I'll let Frank Haas' screenshot show how many. Talking about the tower count, there are 171 towers, steeples, and citadels in the game. There is so much stuff to talk about, but if you have not played this fan game, this should be your first. This is one of the more recent popular fan games. The whole gimmick of this game is that steeples become towers, towers become citadels, and citadels become obelisks. Despite this being expanded versions of the towers, it feels like a completely new fan game, which is also supported by the lobbies looking pretty unique and a spin on the original lobbies found in Duke's Towers of Hell. This game exploded in popularity as soon as it released due to it seeming insane, but the development of this game is relatively quick. Usually the large versions of towers would be used as jokes in the community, as already long citadels like Citadel of Heights and Depths were made even longer. This was not the first Citadel fan game though, as you will see in the lower layer, there is a much older Citadel fan game. Currently four rings and a sub realm is completed. As expected, the difficulties of the Citadels are not always the same as the Towers. An example of this is Tower of Traps and Citadel of Traps. Tower of Traps is difficult difficulty, while Citadel of Traps is remorseless, which is one of the largest jumps in difficulty between a citadel and a tower. The citadels have gameplay that reflects the feel and the style of the tower, which just adds to the awesomeness of the game. I haven't fully played the game, but there seems to be some custom citadels. In Ring 1, there's Citadel of Vengeful Motives. There may be more custom citadels in other rings, but I do not know. Anyway, this is another game that you should play, as it is excellent. Some community recommended creations include Obelisks of Heights and Depths and Citadel of Deep Darkness. Another game that shut up in popularity at release. Caleb's Soul Crushing Domain is a tower game similar to Duke's Towers of Hell, created by Cool Caleb171. And the quirk of the game is that every tower is at least soul crushing difficulty. Similar to J2HXL Project, this is not the first game to have this concept. As way down in the iceberg, there's, to my knowledge, the unofficial pioneer of soul crushing fan games. Currently, there are two areas and a sub realm completed and able to be played. The rings in the game are called scopes. The difficulty currently ranges from insane to nil. To be accessible to obbyists who are not at soul crushing skill, Caleb's soul crushing domain has a feature called all jumps mode. This feature allows you to place checkpoints anywhere you wish. Just a note to console players, you can get the old jumps mode to work on controller. So do it, plug in a keyboard and press M. This will open up the menu and just rebind the buttons to the ones on your controller. Another thing about all jump mode is that it reduces the amount of tower points awarded. 
Normally, a terrifying tower would give 5 tower points, but with all jump mode, terrifying towers award 2 tower points. This game also has soul crushing sigils, which does not follow G2H standards. Caleb's soul crushing domain shares towers with Duke's Towers of Hell. Tower of Vacant Hindrances and Tower of Unsettling Heights are two towers that they both have. This game is great if you need to get a lot better at obbies, as the old jumps mode is used for practicing, and there are some easy soul crushing towers that can be completed. I can recommend Tower of Red Monoliths, as it was a pretty fun tower to go through, so it would probably be pretty fun to try and beat. Just all jumping the towers is also very fun to do. I love going through some of the harder towers and just trying to do all the jumps. Another fan game with a fun gimmick. This time it's that the towers are pierced, meaning that there are no client objects, effectively making them tower tiered obbies. This game is created by Brandy Chem Zero, but the main game is on a group. Purist's Towers of Hell is regarded for its high gameplay standards, contributing to the enjoyable gameplay in all of its towers. The towers in Purist Towers of Hell only have 3 floors, while Citadels have 6 to 10 floors. There's sprites and boxes too. Sprites are short courses that are timed. Talking about timers, Purist Towers of Hell has an innovative feature called medals. There's 3 tiers of medals, copper, silver and gold. Getting gold medals requires beating a tower within a very short time frame, and they are very difficult to get. Even if towers have a reduced floor count, the size of rings makes for an excess of content. Ring 4 is currently the most populated ring, with there being 22 towers, while Ring 5 is somewhat infamous due to the crazy amount of towers inside the ring, being 37 towers, the most populated ring I've seen in any fan game. Purist Towers of Hell is its own genre of fan games, as there are a few based on the idea of three floored Purist Towers. This fan game is, in a way, a key developer for showing the possibility of J2H fan games and popularising them in the first place. Purist Towers of Hell was featured on Logan ISL's Push to Terrifying series, as it was key for his skill development early on in the series, providing the necessary stepping stones to progress in obbies. I've played this game a bunch, and I've grown to love some of the towers. Tower of Rocky Furiosity is the first tower ever made in Purist Towers of Hell. This tower has a rocky theme with some great gameplay, definitely a must play if you want to improve in obbies. Citadel of Luminous Obstacles is one of the longest things in Purist Towers of Hell. It looks awesome from the outside and has great gameplay throughout the entire Citadel. Last one I'll cover is Tower of Ripping Realities Fabric. This is one of the best soul crushing towers to exist. It has fantastic gameplay and a super unique style that no other tower adapts. There are a bunch more secrets scattered throughout the game. I strongly recommend playing it. Hi and welcome to my section. My name is Erlik and I created a tower game called Jato Revamped. The basic goal of this game was to get all the Jato towers with let's say, subpar quality, and remake them to fit modern standards. But why did I think of doing all that? Okay, you know the tower difficulty chart? No, not that one, the older one. The cool things about it were, it was very easy as an insane. With a bit of practice, anyone could beat this tower and flex their opinions on the J2 Discord server. The bad things about it were... The gameplay sucked. Like, like what is this? <laughs> the frame didn't match the difficulty chart, as it used scrap difficulties. The tower had gameplay that wasn't even utilized in towers past Ring 4, so it didn't really even prepare you for any harder tower. And so, the creator decided to revamp the tower. Now, the frame actually matched the difficulty chart, but the gameplay was remade from the ground up, now including some trust tech, which was used in more modern Jato towers. And so, after playing this tower, I wondered, what if I could revamp the whole game? So, 
One day I wanted to remake the frame of the Tower of Finning layers because look at it. Look at it! And the basic idea was to first fix the frame gradients to look actually decent and second edit the frame to make it look like a spire. This sounds insane, however thanks to that new frame it could look much more intimidating in zone 1 than whatever this abomination is. When I was done remaking the frame, I ran into an issue. The floor tone gameplay wasn't really aligning well with the new frame and any solution I tried didn't really feel good, so I did the completely normal thing of remaking the gameplay from scratch. And when I was halfway done with remaking the gameplay on the floor, I uploaded the video of it onto YouTube. And it got pretty popular. People really wanted to see more stuff like the TOTL revamp I made, so in the next few months I somehow gathered an entire dev team to make a game called... If you've been around in the J2 community back in 2021, you probably remember how disastrous the release of J2R was. The wind paths were buggy, client objects multiplied like bacteria, and you could type 0 in the game chat to freeze your game. I mean, it got so bad that they had three different trailers for the game. When the game first released, we had more players than J2, but after all this chaos, our player count dropped to single digits. As a result, we chose to close the game and we haven't opened it since. Obby Creator is a game that you construct obbies in. This game is created by Mario118118 and as a fun fact, Mario118118 does this as his job. When you load into the game there are obby slots, which is at first a solid white block. Loading your own slot will give you access to a mode called Edit Mode. In this mode you are able to place a large variety of parts from many categories. These parts range from simple stuff like bowls and blocks to more complicated client objects like cart tracks and jump pads. There is a max amount of special client objects that can be placed in one slot. This is to reduce lag. The max part count is 2000, but it can be increased using game passes. Even if the name suggests that solely obbies are built, many more creations have been made too. There have been stuff from mega fun obbies to incredibly hard tiered obbies and everything in between. There are J2H fan games too. Legmaster's fan game called Towers of Abyss is one of many. Towers of Abyss has 7 rings and 2 zones. The large amount of areas makes it one of the largest obby creator tower fan games. Towers of Abyss also has submissions, which is cool. It's pretty similar to a fan game built in Roblox Studio, except it's actually not. Another large obby creator fan game is Shark's Mini Towers of Abyss, made by Roro Studios. This game was somewhat recently finished and will not be getting any future towers. Roro Studios has decided to make it in Roblox Studio. Funnily enough, this is not the first time an obby creator fan game has been developed in Roblox Studio. If you would like to play any of the fan games mentioned, their ID is on the screen. I have also built a few obbies on obby creator, so I'll show you one right now.
let's move on to the next game. Tower Creator is similar to Obby Creator, in the sense that it allows you to construct obbies inside a Roblox game. However, Tower Creator is more optimised for tower building. Upon loading a slot, you will be able to use Edit Mode. This mode allows for the addition and manipulation of parts. Tower Creator has fostered a community that wants to build towers for another fan game that we are discussing lower down in the iceberg, called Arcs Community Towers of Hell. Tower Creator has a maximum part count of 5,000 and has many great creations. Within Tower Creator, there's other creations too. For example, difficulty charts, tiered obbies, and other miscellaneous stuff. J tier H fan games are inside Tower Creator as well. It's sort of a fan game section. I have made an obscure fan game called Hamburger Obbies. <laughs> this is a semi joke fan game, so I will show one of the obbies here. There are tower fan games too, but not as many as Obby Creator has. If you are interested in playing some tower fan games in Tower Creator, here are some of the IDs. All of them are very cool. Both Tower Creator and Obby Creator are worth playing. They are good stepping stones between being a player and being a creator, even if you don't want to create stuff. Playing other people's creations is super fun. Purple's Totally Tubular Towers 2 is the most notorious fan game when it comes to quality. Created by Artistic Purple Guy, this fan game has smaller towers than normal. The frame is 50 by 50 by 50 compared to the full sized 100 by 100 by 100 floors. The floor count is reduced to 2. There are only 6 floors per tower technically making them steeples, but we don't talk about that. This smaller frame size forces towers to be more concentrated with creativity and higher quality gameplay. There are four rings, which are called realms, and two zones, which are called provinces, and one sub-realm called the lab that are available to play. Purple's Totally Tubular Towers 2 is part of the PTTT trilogy, which includes Purple's Totally Tubular Towers, Purple's Totally Tubular Towers 2, and Purple's Totally Tubular Towers Grand Scheme. The other two are covered later in the iceberg. This game is a direct sequel to Purple's Totally Tubular Towers, being set hundreds of years in the future. Some more notable towers in PTTT 2 include Citadel of Pipes, Tower of Terrifying Ceiling, Tower of Modern Inception, and Tower of Baguette. There are a lot of towers which stand out, but those are some of my picks. In total, there are 99 things to beat, which compose of towers, steeples and citadels, and just other miscellaneous stuff. Purple's Totally Tubular Towers 2 has had some unique past events that were incredibly fun to play. Luckily, they can still be played in the lab. Past events include the 2020 and 2021 Christmas event, 100k event, the toilet event, Halloween events, and a few others. The lab also has scrapped towers too. For example, Tower of Venturing Forever, or other towers that are whitelisted but didn't get in. In the lab, there's an artifact museum. This area reveals some of the very special items that could uncover possible lore. These items are key lobby details from Purple's Totally Tubular Towers. The lab could also be a key to revealing the events that occurred in the PTTT universe, as APG has confirmed that there is lore. The lore still hasn't been analysed, so there is a lot to dissect there. This is one of my favourite fan games, it's super fun to play and it is linked in the description. 
The difficulty chart is the core to all tower games. It quantifies the difficulty of the obstacle courses and displays how difficult something really is. As I said in my video about difficulty charts, the general idea is compressing the lengthy difficulty progression of platformer obbies into a simplified, shorter obby that summarizes all levels of skill. This obby genre. The idea of difficulty chart obbies originated when the Tower of Difficulty Chart in Ring 2 of Duke's Towers of Hell was created. The tower was based around each floor increasing in difficulty until it hit the top of the difficulty chart, which would be the hardest floor. Shortly after this tower, a bunch of content creators created videos around difficulty chart obbies and it dominated the Roblox hobby scene. Obby after obby after obby was being created. Nowadays, difficulty chart obbies have taken a back seat. The whole genre of difficulty chart obbies have originated from the difficulty chart in JTOH, and specifically one tower that created the genre. Modernized difficulty chart obbies have twists such as riding on a bike, swinging on ropes, and many more. There are spins on the difficulty aspect. For example, having a difficulty chart obby that you aren't able to jump in, or one where you get a limited amount of attempts. On top of that, difficulty chart obbies can have one jump per difficulty, one stage per difficulty, many stages per difficulty, or even towers per difficulty. The variety of difficulty chart obbies are crazy, such that they could have their own iceberg as there are so many. Some difficulty chart obbies that stand out include Endor's difficulty chart obby 2, Wraparound Proximity, and Doc's difficulty chart obby 2. As mentioned before, there are even difficulty chart obbies in Tower Creator and Obby Creator. Difficulty chart obbies are very interesting obbies. They're pretty enjoyable to go through, but there's a lot of very low quality obbies. This entry contains a vast range of towers and includes any tower that already exists that gets either nerfed or buffed. This entry covers all games that either nerf or buff towers, except for the game Buffed Towers and a few other nerfed tower games, as they are covered later in the iceberg. A nerfed tower refers to any tower that has been lowered in difficulty compared to the original difficulty of the tower, whereas a buff tower refers to any tower that has been increased in difficulty compared to the original tower. You can calculate how nerfed slash buffed a tower is by using this equation where the O represents the original difficulty and the N represents the new difficulty. Say for example, if Tower of Generation Failure is normally 11.17, which is low mid catastrophic, while let's say Tower of Generation Failure Atomic Nerf is 1.87, what is high easy, this equation is generated. That equals 630.35, meaning that Tower of Generation Failure Atomic Nerf is around 630.35 times harder than the original catastrophic version. Tower of Vacant Hindrance is nerfed, and Citadel Avoid nerfed to intense are some popular nerfed towers. While Tower of Generation Failure Soup buff and Tower of Annoyingly Simple Trials buffed are some popular buffed towers. Apart from buff towers by Blockerman666, other popular games that are a collection of buffed and nerfed towers include Nerfed Towers of Hell, Planet's Atomic Nerfs, and a few others that are covered later in the iceberg. In a way, revamps of towers can serve as a buffed or nerfed version. On top of this, buffed and nerfed towers can be in different games. Say for example, Minecraft Towers. An example of this is Tower of Epicness and Tower of Epicness Revamp. Another example that has been done is Tower of Unsettling Heights by Template and Tower of Unsettling Heights buffed by 2005 LB390 Ogle. Laser has created Tower of Inception Ultra Buff, and it is my favourite buff tower. Unfortunately, it is not done and may not ever be done. Floor 10 is worth all the 18 minutes that the video runs for. This entry includes two games, Gamer's Tower of Heck and Gamer's Towers. Gamer's Tower of Heck is a game with a singular tower. It has gathered up an impressive 11.3 million visits, though. Gamer's Tower of Heck is the prequel to the next game, and is created by one gamer, two boy. Even if it is titled as a tower, it has 15 completed floors and around 30 total floors. The gradient of the tower goes from a deep blue to a pure red. The gameplay is not special in any way, featuring mostly repeated jumps with very little substance. The tower uses kill bricks, spinners and other client objects too, 
but they are fairly basic. There is no ring selectors, the tower is the only thing in the game. The tower has heaps of skips, which were fun to find and shorten the tower even more of its pretty short runtime of around 10 to 20 minutes. It's a cool game to see all the towers that were made around 2020, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend playing it as there are much better fan games that are in this iceberg. Gamers Towers has 1.2 million visits and you probably don't know what it is, as it is one of the most unknown fan games on this iceberg. This fan game was originally owned by one gamer 2 boy, but it has been moved to a group. Gamers Towers is a tower game that holds 6 towers. They are called Wraparound City, Mega Fun Tower, Tower of Burning Flames, Tower of Climbing Green, Tower of Icy Blue, and Cartoony Tower. The frames are sized similarly to Purple's Totally Tubular Towers 2, and the towers are 5 floors long. This game only has 3 difficulties, easy, medium and hard. 3 towers are easy, 2 towers are medium, and 1 tower is hard. This game has no ring select, instead you spawn directly into lobby which is a floating grass island with other floating grass islands surrounding it. I'm just gonna get to the point, this game is not that good. Most towers have very similar repetitive gameplay, however Tower of Burning Flame is the only one that looks like it has more than 15 minutes put into it. The mini frames next to the portals are very detailed and are very accurate to the tower. There's a pretty basic shop as well that sells coils, VIP and admin. It's a cool game to look back on and see some super old classic gameplay design and creativity, but there's better choices if you do want to play any fan games. I'll let the game's description introduce you to this one. Mark's Towers of Peril is a game heavily inspired by Duke's Towers of Hell, and a tower from it called Citadel of Peril. Citadel of Peril is a citadel in Zone 1, Duke's Towers of Hell. The whole gimmick of the citadel is that lava is rising throughout the entire thing, and you had to outspeed run the lava, which is the gimmick Mark's Towers of Peril inherits. Ring 1 is the only ring released, and features 13 towers. There is also an event area that is not too interesting. Rings are called areas. Area 1 is set in a volcano, which is very fitting, and is the location Citadel of Peril is located in Duke's Towers of Hell. Currently every playable tower is taken from Duke's Towers of Hell, with a tower called Tower of Learning Lava in development. Each tower's difficulty is harder than the original difficulty due to the lava making each tower a lot harder. It's pretty similar to J2HXL Project. This is a cool game if you want to play a variety of familiar towers with rising lava, but there isn't much more to do. It also provides a different challenge to try, but you could also just play Citadel of Peril itself. Voidal Towers is a popular tower game by Franco J. Previously joining the game for the first time would bring you to the tutorial. In the tutorial, you learn all the basics you need to know in Voidal Towers. The tutorial is situated in a dark space, which is possible lore or a story to it. Voidal Towers does not have a ring select and has 8 towers and 1 steeple. Despite the comparably low tower count, the game used to have a thriving speedrunning community. Many people competed for the fastest completions. I'm unsure who had the fastest time in each tower though. Voidal Towers is one of the most popular games on this list, and one of the few to have a video on it by Flamingo. Flamingo has had a tower created in his honour called Flamingo Tower. Voidal Towers has a difficulty chart, however none of the difficulties are named. The current hardest tower on the difficulty chart is Tower of Poised Purple. Voidal Towers has a star system that rewards stars on completed towers. Different portals have different star requirements. It's pretty similar to Super Mario 64 Stargates. This game also has a shop, which a variety of items can be purchased for Robux. Unlike Duke's Towers of Hell, Voidal Towers uses a pebble texture for killbricks. This is different to Duke's Towers of Hell, which uses a granite texture. The frame sizes of towers also feel slightly smaller than the towers in Duke's Towers of Hell, but that could just be looks. In Voidal Towers, the towers have a naming theme, which usually utilises an objective before a colour or certain theme. This can be seen in towers such as Tower of Going Green, Tower of Baked Brown, and Tower of Bubbly Blue. 
Towers can also be named unconventionally, say for example Storm Tower and Flamingo Tower. Both of these end off with tower instead of start with tower, which is usually not standard. Voidal Towers is discontinued, but it can still be played. However, it is no longer getting developed or updates. Franco J is now developing his next tower game, Tower World, and it's able to be played. However, it's very, very early in development. Tower World is later in the iceberg. As the name says, this game is Duke's Towers of Hell if it was a tycoon. This game covers all of the main rings of the game, going from Ring 1 to Ring 9 and Zone 1 to Zone 7. The game is created by RMXV Strength and has the intention to bring you back when the front page was plagued by tycoons. It follows a pretty standard tycoon gameplay loop, which is wait for money and buy. The droppers in this tycoon represent the towers in Duke's Towers of Hell. The furnace typically seen in tycoon games is replaced with a wind pad. We've already been through what a wind pad is. The main lobby area of the game is a mix between Zone 3's and Forgotten Ridges lobby in Duke's Towers of Hell. There are also cannons that shoot you across the islands to get to the main tycoon which is very similar to Zone 3. The game also features fighting too. A sword is added to your inventory upon joining the game. Combat can be disabled, however you get 1% less cash from everything as a condition for disabling PvP. Since this game isn't enabled on console, I have not played it too much. It does look interesting to go through though. We have made it to the final entry of layer 1. Dr. Weasel's Towers of Hell is also one of the oldest entries on this layer. This game has no ring select and just features one area with 17 towers. The one area also has no citadels or steeples, just towers that range from 1 floor to 10 floors. The game has a lobby very similar to the original Ring 1 lobby in Duke's Towers of Hell. The owner of this game, Dr. Weasel, had his account deleted, also it is somewhat buggy. A unique thing about Dr. Weasel's Towers of Hell that other fan games don't have is that the game primarily uses a universal stud texture instead of a normal stud texture. This makes the game very unique and stands out from the others. On the actual quality of the towers, they vary a lot. The second tower in the game, Tower of Heaven, has cones in it. Cones reward meshes upon touching them, and meshes are a currency that we'll get to later. Tower of Heaven also looks a lot like Tower of Heck in Duke's Towers of Hell, even having the same frame colours. In the game, there's a currency called a mesh. Meshes are used to buy additional boost items in the One Life Shop. The One Life Shop has items like speed, jump, and regen coils and armor, which blocks kill break damage. When you spawn in, there is a timer at the lobby which reminds you how long you have spent in this really old fan game, which was created back in 2020. In the main tower portal areas, there are two sections, towers and other towers. Other towers are stuff made by the community, and towers is stuff made by Dr. Weasel. This game was fun for me to go back to and is a good nostalgia trip to one of the first somewhat unique JTOH fan games. Unfortunately, it is now private for console players though. This episode was quite the challenge to make, so hopefully you enjoyed these entries. I enjoyed going through these fan games, which some I had played a lot of and some I haven't even entered the game yet. The next layer is going to be by Ninja and Ocean. His channel is linked in the description. Same with all of the games featured today. I'll update the description every single on new part releases. Anyway, have a great day, see ya!